And where I'm actually going to start sitting today, I'm going to move my towels off to the side because I won't need them until later. Um, and let's just sit anywhere that is comfortable for you. We'll just do a few moments of um, of breathing and non asana type yoga. So first, just sit with your shoulders over your hips. Make sure you're not leaning forward or back or to the side. And just find your breath. Sounds simple enough, but of course the focus your mind there is anything but simple. Do a few moments of alternate nostril breathing. Let's inhale first through both nostrils. Use your right thumb to plug the right nostril. Exhale left. Inhale left. The pinky or ring finger closes the left so that you can exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. We'll take it all the way to the top of that inhale. And when you're ready to exhale, lower the right hand and exhale both. Continue to breathe calmly through both nostrils. In a moment, we'll take three ohms and we'll let it be separated into three parts each ohm. So the ah, the o, and the hmm sound. The sound of that M gets lost over the Zoom audio, so you probably will hear nothing, but still just keep your sound going. And you'll have to think about what your breath length is so that you know when to switch from the ha ah sound to the ho oh sound to the hum mm sound. Let's bring the hands to prayer. Inhale.
after your third breath, just release your arms down, blink the eyes open. And we'll save one more pranayama for at the end of class. Let's come on to hands and knees. Oh, we have Ashley showing up at the door. Come on, drop for now. All right, hands and knees into cat cow. So on your inhale, arch. Find your mula bandha as you exhale, surround. Inhale, the sitting bones separate as you lift them up towards the ceiling. Exhale, they draw together as you tuck your tailbone under. One more like this. Inhale. Round as much as you can. Exhale. Let's find neutral for the inhale. You step to your plank. We'll stay here for a moment. You can always have your knees down. But make sure you have weight in your finger pads and in your knuckles. You don't want your wrists to hurt now or ever. Downward dog for the exhale. Return to plank for your inhale. You can do that a few times, whatever your pace is. When you do get forward into your plank, make sure that you're not letting your hips drop. They're not saggy, they're just straight line from shoulders to feet. We'll meet in downward dog. So that we can pedal out the feet. Start to walk the feet forward toward the hands. When they get in the vicinity, doesn't have to be all the way forward. Sort of bend in your knees, drop your head, and draw your belly in. So there's a slight feeling of space between belly and thighs. Start to roll up. You can bend the knees however much in order to help that process. And when you rise up all the way, inhale. Exhale to fold. Come halfway up to your inhale. And find your plank again for your exhale. This time we'll lift the right leg up off the ground. And press to your three-legged downward dog as if someone is pulling on your right foot. Return to your three-legged plank for your inhale. Let's do this a few more times. If it's too much, just put your right foot down again. Keep your arms straight the whole time. And after the third one, we'll just switch legs so that we can feel how much strength the right leg has to have. Your left leg looks really fancy right now, but you'll feel it more in your right leg. It's working to keep your hips up. Let's meet in a downward dog with two feet on the floor. Shake out your head and neck. Start to walk your feet forward again. Let the heels press down each time you step your foot. Little bend in the knees when you get there. Find the space between belly and thighs. Roll up slowly. To bend the knees more and drop the tailbone more to help articulate that. Inhale to reach up, look up. Exhale to fold. Halfway up for the inhale. We'll find our plank again for the exhale. You can make this tabletop if you prefer. We're just going to bring our right knee to the elbow and then step back to so either plank or tabletop. Left knee to the left elbow and then step it back. And just alternate at your pace. So whether you're in plank or tabletop, try to keep your arms really steady, your shoulders where they are. There's not a lot of wiggling. And there's not even wiggling from the right to the left. After about your third, just press the downward dog, shake everything out, release the tension. Walk the feet forward. Press the heels down each time. Fold a little deeper. Shake out the head and roll up at your pace. Inhale to reach up whenever you're risen. 
And to try your right knee to the chest. So it's just like a little crunch, but standing up. And reach up, foot down, inhale, left knee up, exhale. Foot down, inhale, and fold forward, exhale. Come halfway up for the inhale, and step or jump, chaturanga for your exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. We'll stay here for a few breaths. So heading toward uh, Sutta Konasana today, that's toward the end of primary series. There's a lot of core needed. Uh, we'll have to be comfortable rounding our backs. So we will be working toward it. Maybe not all the way to it, depends on you. If I can't do it later, I'll just explain it to you. Let's step our right foot forward. Simple twist. Stack the right arm over the left. Inhale there. Untwist for the exhale and lower the back knee. Inhale to reach up for your Anjaneyasa. Exhale to lower the palms. Lift the back knee. And find your simple twist again. Inhale. Exhale, untwist, back knee comes down. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, hands down, back knee lift. One more time, inhale, twist. Exhale, untwist. Anjaneyasana, reach up, inhale. Hands down, exhale. Step to plank, inhale. Vinyasa, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Step the left foot forward. Simple twist to the inhale. This is a stretch for your left hip. Untwist, exhale, lower the right knee. Inhale, then we wind up with a stretch for the hip flexors. Exhale to untwist. In, or I should have said hold it. Inhale, twist. Exhale, untwist. So there's a lot of movement. The inhale, you enter a pose, and the exhale is like your transition. One more round. Let's meet in plank. And just notice the effort that it's taking to keep your hips as high as they are. Let's bend the elbows to chaturanga, but don't let the hips drop when you do that. And inhale, the hips will come down through back bending. And downward dog, exhale, the hips will go up to forward bending. Just a few breaths there. Either walk the feet forward like we did before, or heels up high for an inhale, bend the knees, exhale, look forward and jump. Inhale when you get there, fold, exhale. And stay there for a moment, bend the knees, drop your tailbone, and start to roll up. And that belly drawing in feeling is going to help you round the mid back. And whenever you wind up with your head stacked, reach up, inhale, right knee to the chest, exhale. We're going to keep the right knee there. Reach up, inhale, and hands to prayer, exhale. Just one more breath. Maybe your standing leg can get a little straighter. But I lower that right knee. Foot. We'll try the other side. Arms come up. This helps us kind of spring into action. Left knee comes up as the hands come in. Now reach up. Try not to drop the left knee. Hands come in again. Right leg gets a little straighter. And we're not leaning to the right. We're trying to keep everything level. Okay, left foot comes down. Let's reach up for an inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. 
step or jump for your chaturanga exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Ready to forward. Warrior one, inhale, reach up. Let's interlace the fingers behind the back for the exhale. Inhale to straighten the arms and your knuckles reach toward your back foot. And exhale to fold, reach your thumb away from your back. We'll go back and forth three times. Inhale to rise up. We'll reach our knuckles toward our left foot. And exhale, we'll fold. We'll have to bring our belly in to articulate our spine. Drop the head. One more time. Notice how much your thighs are squeezing together so you don't lose your balance. And this last fold will release the hands down. And let's step to a three-legged plank. So our right foot will just slide back and up. Let's lower the foot down. Lift the left foot up. Lower the foot down, lift the right foot up. One more time, alternate. Try not to be shifty. You're stabilizing yourself. Okay, either vinyasa or downward dog. And then we'll get to do all of that on the other side. So our left foot will step forward for warrior one. Feel to feel alignment if you can. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, interlace behind you. I have to bend the elbows to get the fingers interlaced. Then straighten the arms for an inhale. And exhale, we fold forward any amount, but notice your belly has to draw in. We inhale to rise up. Big chest stretch. We exhale. Again, the belly is inspired to work. Take one more round. The slower you breathe, the easier it's going to be. And after your third one, just bend the elbow as well as the hand. Find your three legged plank. And this time, lower the foot. We'll come down to tabletop. I'm going to just tuck in my shirt a little bit better. We'll try to stay in tabletop with a neutral back with our belly drawn in. So at no point are we going to do this cat-cow thing right now. We're going to stay neutral. Just slide the right leg back and maybe lift it off the ground. But if when you lift it off the ground, you felt your back arch, either lower it a bit or lower it all the way. One more breath there. Keep the belly drawing in. And just bring the right knee down again. Try not to let anything else get shifty or move, and slide the left leg back. Possibly lift it up. And obviously the leg could go higher if you were to arch like this, but we're not doing that right now. We're trying to keep our lowest ribs tucked in. Okay, lower that left knee. We're going to try to alternate a little bit faster, and you might find that then you start wiggling more. So just go at whatever pace you can do while staying hips facing down, while staying waistline moving up. And if you want to make it a little harder, you can reach opposite arm as well. But that doesn't give us the free pass for wiggling. So if you're going opposite arm, you're just working a little bit harder, but you're not changing that established Of stabilization. Okay. Let's meet with one leg up. You decide if your arm is up also. We'll try to lift the foot that's still on the ground up off the ground. So now you have just a knee back there, not also a foot. So there's less assistance with your balance, more inspiration to draw the belly in. And lower the hand and everything else. Try the other side. Maybe you have to re-energize in the core so that you don't arch. Then the other leg back, possibly up. Decide if you want your arm up. And then the toes of that second foot. Ooh-wee. Okay. 
Okay, and lower knee and hand. Let's inhale to arch. And find your downward dog, exhale. Take out your head and neck. Oh, now my hamstring is on fire. Okay, right foot forward to the hand. Let's come on to fingertips and straighten that right leg. Bend the mat. Inhale. Bend it again. Exhale. High lunge. Arms up. Inhale. Fingertips down. Exhale. Just one more time to straighten the right leg as much as you can. Inhale. Bend it again. Exhale. Reach up. Inhale. And find cactus arms for the exhale. Straighten your front leg and your arms. Inhale. And bend the knee for cactus arms. Exhale. Inhale. Straighten. All of a sudden, balance is tricky. Exhale to bend. Let's lower the hands down and just step back for either vinyasa or something restful. You'll have to know if you hold your breath. And if you do, try to take all the vinyasas that are offered. Okay, left foot forward to the hands. First, we come on to fingertips. Let's just create more space, that's all. Inhale to straighten the left leg. Exhale to bend. Reach up. Inhale, sit the leg so that your hips are square. Exhale, fingers down. You can go palms down if you want. It's just a little harder to get the left leg straight, but it's possible. And then, high lunge, inhale. And we'll find our cactus arms, exhale. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Squeeze for balance. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. We'll place the hands on the floor. Downward dog or somehow something to relieve you of your breath holding patterns. Let's walk the hands to the feet. Once you feel weight in your heels, your hands are free. Let's slide them under the feet, palms facing up, toes by wrists. Inhale when you're there. Belly in and fold, exhale. So even though our torso is very likely connected to our thighs because we are not emaciated creatures, we want to create the feeling of lift in the belly so that it feels more spacious. It doesn't have to be physical space. To create the feeling. Okay. Release the hands. Walk into your downward dog again. And when you get there, lift the right leg up high. Kick yourself in the butt. Stack your right hip up so that your knee is pointing up a little bit more. And either stay here or bring the knee forward to your plank and touch your elbow. And then return to that place we were just. Yeah. We'll just take three breaths, either moving or not moving. If you are moving, it will be an inhale forward to your plank and an exhale to your three-legged downward dog. Okay, let's lower the foot and turn the feet into ballet first position. So your heels are, are touching, maybe your calf muscles are touching, but your toes are facing out. This is just going to help us be more stable. Lift your right leg up just like you did and kick yourself in the butt just like you did. Now maybe slide your left arm back, come onto the fingertips so your left hand is kind of halfway to your foot. If that feels okay, reach for your foot with your left hand. And then you can get a little bit of a kick action, which feels pretty awesome for the hip, but balance is really tricky. One more breath. Release the foot, release the hand. Turn your feet to parallel again. And before we do all that on the other side, let's bring the right foot forward to the hands. 
for triangle pose. So lower the left heel, straighten the right leg. Lots of arm choices here. Because we're going to a, a Ichikorma kind of thing later, we don't necessarily need to do any particular thing with the shoulders. If we were going to something like Pashasana, we would use all of these standing poses as a prep for that. But you can still experiment with your arms and see what feels good. Let's lower the hands down, bend the back knee all the way down, and walk the hands to that right knee. So just an easy Anjaneyasana. If you have no ankle pain or pain in the foot, the back foot, we're going to lift the back knee off the ground, purely by pressing into the toenails. So we didn't tuck the toe to make that knee lift. It's a different stretch for the ankle. If there's any pain, you put the knee down again or at least lower it. Okay, back knee down, hands to the floor, vinyasa. Let's lift the left leg up, inhale, kick yourself in the butt so your left knee is pointing to the ceiling. Try to level out your shoulders a bit. Either stay here or inhale forward to your plank and touch your knee with your elbow and exhale back again. If you can do this with the feeling of your belly button drawing in, it does make for some lovely core work. There are many things to distract us with, however. Okay, let's lower that left foot down. Find your turk out position. This is purely to help with the balance of it. You don't have to do it this way. If you want to keep your feet parallel, it's fine. This makes it easier to balance on that right foot when it's turned like this. So lift the left leg up. We'll kick ourselves to the butt. Squeeze your heel toward your butt with your hamstring muscle. And then the right hand can come back. You can test the waters. If you can keep squeezing your heel in toward your butt when you go to reach for your foot, it's not too far away. Okay, let that go. Turn the feet to parallel so that you can step your left foot forward, triangle pose. Left hand anywhere. That helps to get that left leg straight. I feel a weird tightness, so I'm going to rise up and try to enter from a different place. Lots of wiggling that has to happen. Sometimes we don't even know the tightness is there until we get on the mat and we try something. Let's meet in Anjaneyasana. Don't bring any anxiety into it. So far, it's just a nice, relaxing, calm Anjane. Maybe look back at your right foot. Make sure that your foot is actually behind your knee. It's not somewhere off in a diagonal. And when you can, lift your right knee by pressing into your toenails and into the top of the foot. And if you just lift your knee an inch, that might be enough. Okay, let's lower the knee, place the hands, vinyasa. Right foot forward, back, uh, back heel down. Let's go for... Um, a variation on Parshwakanasana. We'll put our hands big toe side of foot. We're just going to stay here for a moment. So our legs are like warrior two and our palms are just down. Take a breath. Put a little bend in the elbows so your torso lowers to the ground. 
slide your right arm under the right leg so you can reach your arms out like wings. Maybe drop your head a bit, stare at your left leg, make sure that it is straight. If you're addicted to bind, there is a bind here that can be had. It doesn't really change the shape of your back or your hip. So it's kind of an easy place to stick in the bind. Okay, let's unravel from there. Find your Ardha Chandrasana. So shift the weight into the right foot, lift the left leg, left arm, gaze up. If balance is easy here, place your right hand on your right ankle. That changes the game intensely. lower the fingers, we'll step left foot to meet right foot and find a squat. Whatever your version of a squat is, as low as you want to go, reach forward, maybe even drop your head so that you can curl into a little ball more. Next inhale, we'll come all the way to standing, push into the feet, reach up to the ceiling. Exhale to fold. Come halfway up. Inhale. Step or jump chaturanga. Exhale. Upward facing. Inhale. Downward facing. Exhale. Left foot forward. Right heel spins down. Both hands, big toe, side of foot. And just hang out here for a few breaths. Make sure it's comfy. Swing your left hip back. Not comfy, find a way to make it so. Okay, so at this moment, our spine is closer to the ceiling than our spine. We have to bend the elbows, we drop the torso down. Now we can get our shoulder under the knee, or at least our arm under the knee, and reach the arms out like wings. So we're testing the balance here with our legs. Drop the head and see that your back leg is strong. You can actually see your kneecap rising up towards your quad as your quads engage. Okay, unravel your arms. Find your Ardha Chandrasana. Right leg up, right arm up. Kick that right heel back and make a choice where you want your left hand to be. Okay. Lower the right fingers, step the right foot next to the left foot. We'll come all the way to sitting this time. So going through a squat is not a good way for you to sit. Then do something else. Eventually you'll wind up on your butt and we'll lift the legs up to Navasana. You don't have to have them straight. You could bend your knees. Just try balancing on your butt. Let's cross the shins, plant the hands, Lean forward and lift your butt an inch off the ground. Lower your butt down again, lift the legs. And cross your shins the other way. Plant your hands, lift your butt an inch. Lower your butt down. Last time, legs out. Then legs in, it's like your knees are attracted to your shoulders as you lean forward. And just take it through for your vinyasa. So you lean forward and slide the feet through that little non-existent space between your hands. All paths will lead you to downward dog. Just bring the right foot three quarters of the way forward to the hips, twisted triangle, left hand down, right hand either up or assisting the squaring of your hips. By either pulling your left hip up or pushing your right hip back. Okay, 
untwist. We're going to bring that back leg in so that we sit for Ardhamatindrasana. We twist to the right. So the twist is the same direction. That right foot didn't even move. We just let everything kind of revolve around it. You can keep your elbow bent and push your knee back with your elbow, or you can reach down for the foot. I like to keep the right fingers on the floor to help me sit upright, but you can also wrap the right arm behind your back. Okay, let's unravel. We'll stand on that right foot so it didn't move and it's still not moving. For standing splits, hands to the right calf muscle, or the ankle, and as you feel comfortable in the balance, bend the elbows more and more. Pull your torso toward your right leg. Lift your left leg a little higher. And just remember what this feels like. Put into mental category where your top leg is. Let's lower the fingertips down. On your exhale, curl into a little ball. Bring your knee toward your forehead. Inhale, extend. To where you were, or maybe even more of a split. Exhale, curl in so both knees are bending, forehead comes to touch the knee. Inhale, extend away. One more time. I know your right hip is on fire right now. Mine is too. Okay, we'll step left foot to meet right foot. And again, we'll squat and sit, or we'll sit some other way. We end up with our butt on the ground. This time, let's roll down to our back, but maybe not all the way. Let's hold on to the thighs and start to turn your spine into a C shape, belly in. And as you hold on to your legs, it can help control the descent. You can even move your hands along your thighs. And at some point, you might want to come all the way down or you might not. The hard part is how the heck we do we get back up? So we're going to try to walk up our legs. And I like to stare at the belly button. It just kind of helps it draw in mentally anyway, because it physically helps that process. Let's try this one more time. So it all initiates with your tailbone tucking under. And you don't have to come down very far, just to the point where you feel like it's a little shaky or maybe a little precarious. And then we start to come up again, keeping that rounded feeling until you're right at the top and you can sit up. Okay, let's cross the shins, vinyas. We get to do all of this on side two. So first we step our left foot about three quarters of the way forward for twisted triangle. Heel to heel alignment. Decide what side of your foot you want your right hand to be. Oh, maybe it's on a block. If you don't have a block, surely you have something in your house that can be a block. You could also put your hand on your shin. If you're trying to work on your balance and that concept of scissoring your legs together, that's a great place to put your hand because it's not that stable. So you really have to work your legs like that. Okay, let's untwist. For our Mati Drasana, the left foot doesn't move. We'll just bring the rest of our body forward and down. Have a seat and twist. If you want your right leg to not be bent in this form, just straighten it out in front of you. No big deal. So we hug, hook, or reach. The key element here is bridge the gap between your armpit and your thigh. And Anouk is not in this class today, but she sent me this gnarly request for tomorrow, which really the key is this aspect of twist. Just like we've done in our Jasna C a million times. Okay, let's slowly unravel. We'll stand on that left foot. Standing splits. We'll 
take a few breaths there, just trying to lift the right leg higher. One trick to getting the leg higher is put more weight forward on your left foot. Sometimes we like to hang out with the heel a little bit too much. Okay, fingertips down, and we get to move with breath. It might make our splits a little bit more full. We exhale into a little ball. We inhale, extend everything away. Just two more times, whatever your breath pace is. At some point, we wind up with two feet on the floor so that we can squat and sit down, or if that's not how you're sitting, there's a different thing. All right, we'll lay down again. And this time, if you have a ponytail or bun in the way, move it out of the way. We're just gonna have our feet behind our hips like we would if we're lifting to a back bend, but we're not gonna lift to a back bend. We're gonna either press the whole spine into the floor or let yourself be in a neutral spine where there could be like a quarter inch gap between your low back and the ground. So you decide, but it's gonna be a little harder to maintain neutrality. We're just gonna lift our right leg up, extend it out, bend it again so the knee is over the hip and bring the foot down. And we'll try the other side. So we're trying to do this without letting anything shift in the torso. Bend the left knee, and lower that foot down. Just one more time, right side, like this. We bend the knee up, we extend it out, we bend the knee over hip, we go on the foot, left foot lifts off the ground, leg extends out, try not to let anything change in your back. Okay, so feel free to repeat that, or bring both legs to this tabletop shape. It's like you were in a really uncomfortable chair and then it got tipped over and now you're on your back. So it's 90 degrees ish with hips and knees. And all of a sudden it's really hard to maintain this neutrality in the back or to press your spine down. So do your best. If it's too much, either straighten your legs or bring the knees in more. When you're able, extend the right leg out and bring it in again and extend the left leg out. Just do this a few times, whatever pace. I like to go really slow because otherwise I can sense that my back is shifting or lifting. And those of you who are in that class where we did Pitcha the other day, sliding the toe along the, um, the inseam of the leg, you might want to play with that a little bit because you can put it into body memory, how to be strong in the core while you're moving your legs. Okay, so let's lower the feet down again. Theoretically, nothing changed even today. Let's reach the arms overhead and then just bring them hands over shoulders. Just two more times like this. When you reach the arms overhead, this is not a license to splay out the ribs. If this is easy for you, I am very happy for you. I find it very hard. Okay, let's curl up. We're just gonna bring our hands to the shin and start to rock and roll forward and back until eventually we can squat again. That might not be possible because of your knees, in which case, squat some other way. Eventually, we're gonna wind up standing anyway. So from the squat, if you made it there, just push it to your feet, lift your arms, and let's fold forward for the exhale. Inhale, halfway up. Upward jump, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Let's walk the hands back to the feet. Bend the knees, and like you did earlier, roll up, nice and slow. Maybe it's getting easier. I'm just gonna face this way, but you're fine as is. We're gonna bring our hands to prayer. Right ankle to the lower left side, flying pigeon. Mm -hmm. 
We'll stay in this position for another moment, but left hand to hip, right hand to big toe. So all the change was our arms and set up. We'll start to rise and extend the leg out to the side. Push the ball of your foot away. Your, your fingers are pulling back, but your foot is trying to escape, essentially. Let's bring our ankle again down to the lower thigh, under the hands. So you're just in a nice, easy flying pigeon. We'll set up our hands again, right hand to hip this time. Left hand is going to come around to the pinky toe side of the foot, so we can extend the leg forward and twist. You can either keep your right hand on your hip or reach it back. And try to look back, drop your right hip down. Let's bring it again to our flying pigeon. Release the grip, maybe elbow to knee, other elbow to foot. Okay, this time Yogi toe lock grip again, left hand to the hip, extend the right leg forward. So this is of the three, this is definitely the hardest. We're going to push the ball of the foot forward like we did when it was to the side. It's much harder to go to the front. Okay, bend the knee, just release the grip. We will try that again in a few minutes, but before we do, let's go to the other side. Left ankle to the lower right side. This just opens the hip. Gets us established in our balance, which hopefully we don't lose for the next 90 seconds or so. Right hand to the hip, left hand yogi toe lock grip, first two fingers and thumb. We start to stand up, and even if your leg doesn't straighten all the way, if it's something like this, you're still pushing the ball of your foot away. Whether the leg straightens or not, that's your hamstring's business, but your ankle and your foot can be strong. Let's bring our ankle again to the lower right side. Maybe you can sit a little bit lower than you did previous round, left hand to hip, right hand comes across the top of the foot, bring that knee in as you kick forward so that it reaches nice and square, twist back, knee over that left shoulder, and even if your top leg is not straight, your bottom leg can be straight. Okay, bring it to flying pigeon again. If you lose your balance, just meet us when we can. Set up your hands. So remember when we were going from the squat all the way to standing, that's what your bottom leg has to do now. So you're extending your left leg forward as you're pushing your right foot through the ground in order to get it straight. Okay, just bend out that left leg, lower the foot, pull my fire and my hamstring. Okay, let's face the long edge of the mat, separate the feet for your prasara to, so that it's about the distance of your arm span, ankles under your wrists. Hands to the hips, inhale, and fold forward, exhale. Place the hands between the feet, inhale, and head down, exhale. If you have any pain you need to modify, this should feel decent. Gravity is helping. Our hands are helping. Okay, let's straighten the arm. We're going to walk the hands over to the right foot for prasarta, um, like normal. We did a variation earlier. So for this one, not prasarta, sorry, parashwakana. Warrior two stands with the legs. You can either be here with your uh, right elbow on your right side or have your right hand down on the floor. So we're getting into our hips quite a bit. You just decide how much. If you want your right hand on the floor but palm flat is too much, just go to fingertips. Gives you a few more inches of wiggle room. Lower the top hand, walk your hand around to the other side on your left toes to face the short edge of the mat. And decide what you want to do with your left arm so that it feels like a nice stretch through the right side of the body.
Carolyn, I'm not sure what that pillow has to do with this pose. <laughs> okay, let's lower the hand and walk the hands over to the right. Prasara to D. Reach for your big toes, first two fingers and thumbs, make a circle. Inhale and pull yourself through on the exhale. So your biceps are literally engaged in this stretch. Get the weight out of your heels. They're not going to lift off the ground, but you're not just hanging out on the heels. You're distributing the weight through the whole foot. Okay, let's inhale to straighten the arms. Walk the hands under the shoulders. We'll bring the heels in for goddess pose. You can stay just like this, or you can bring your hands up to your knees or your elbows to your knees. I find elbows to the knees the most difficult. It's like frog when we're on the floor, but we're just not on the floor, but it's that painful. Take one more breath. Okay, so somehow we're gonna come down to our butts. I'm gonna go through Samakhanasana, but you do not have to do that. To do that, you would lower your hands, extend your legs out to the side, roll on the heels, and just walk your hands back. So eventually your butt is down. There's a thousand ways to get your butt down. When you do, we're going to make a V shape with our leg, attempting 90 degrees. And let's twist to face the right leg. You can put your left hand on your thigh to help keep the twist. Reach the right arm up and over toward your left foot. So it's like a paradasana, just with our right leg staying straight. Very challenging to get that left shoulder inside of the knee. One way that I like to help that happen is instead of holding the right thigh, I would reach my left arm out in front and walk it out. Okay, let's rise up and just twist to the other side. So we'll Aim our belly button for our left knee. It's not really going to face that way, but the best we can. Maybe the right hand helps you stay in the twist, left arm up, and any amount we add the side bend. The side bend with the twist. And it was a twist first, remember. So your chest is going to be always facing this inside of the knee. This is one of those poses that you really do need all of the breath to get into the depth of it. Okay, let's start to rise up. And we'll just wiggle the legs together. If you're facing the side like I am, then just turn yourself to face the front of your mat. Let's lift arms and legs. So we're just balanced. And from there, we'll curl into a little ball, hold the shins, and literally pull your knees in, drop your head towards your knees. We'll inhale, extend everything out again. Exhale, curl it all in again. Either keep doing this, or to make it a little bit harder, you might want to come down lower, and then it would be like a low boat, which is not that fun and then curl again. So you decide. Take two more. And if you came down to low boat, just rock yourself up again so you're balancing on the butt position. It's taking me a minute to get there. Okay, there. <laughs> now let's cross the shins and vinyasa. Some days rocking doesn't work at all. So it's kind of a miracle when it does. Laura, you might know exactly what I'm talking about with that. Let's bring our right leg forward, Anjaneyasana, into Hanumanasana. So maybe you want to work hip flexors. John, you would then stay here. You could even stay here and start to pull your back foot in more. That would deal with your hip flexors more. Otherwise, Hanuman, we're dealing with the left leg hip flexors, 
but we're also dealing with the right leg hamstring. So you decide how far you take it. Let's walk ourselves into Anjume again. And this time adding a twist. Left arm up and over. Hook your arm as far over as you can so you can get your prayer twist. Lift your back knee. And either stay here or to challenge the balance, shift your weight onto uh, the left toenails. Lean forward so your toenails drag along the mat until you're leaning forward so much that you can get your left leg off the ground. If you've just tried that, notice how similar it is to your Ekapada Bakasana entrance. Let's step back again if your leg is lifted. Let's untwist and vinyasa. Try the other side, left leg forward, Anjaneyasana. So I already feel a stretch in the right hip flexors, but if I wanted more, I could bring that back foot in closer. Or you can take it to Hanuman, which doesn't detract from that hip flexor stretch, it just um, Sort of distracts the mind, but it doesn't take any of the physical stretch out of that. Carolyn is having the best time ever. I love it. So now there's a cat toy involved. I'd much prefer a cat toy than a pillow. I don't know what you're doing with that pillow. But now this is funny. <laughs> All right, let's bring it to Anjaneyasana again into a prayer twist. So Anjane, our knee is so bent that it's like over the toes. But in your lunge and in your approach to it, unbend your front knee a little bit so that you can dive in deeper. You can use your armpit pretty much on your thigh if you're going to twist all the way into your potential. So decide if you want your right foot to stay on the floor or if you take it to your toenails. Eventually, if you lean forward enough, you'll notice your right toenail can drag along the floor until the right leg gets light. So there's not a whole lot of risk or jump or kick. If you have your leg up, return it to the floor, undo your twist, vinyasa. Let's jump through and have a seat. Let's go for Janyu A for a few breaths. It's going to be one. So bend the right knee, thighs 90 degrees. Inhale, reach, and exhale, fold. So this is a relatively easy pose compared to some of the other ridiculous things that we have done. Potentially, that gives you the opportunity to think about your belly drawing in, just like when we were forward bending earlier. So the flesh of your torso is not going to peel up completely, but just visualize some space and draw your belly button up. Okay, let's rise up and change legs. Right leg straight, left leg bend. We inhale. And we fold, exhale. I recorded an hour class last night because I wanted to test out my new computer and Zoom and all this stuff. And practicing at night is very hard because of all the food that you've eaten throughout the day. So right now, since it's the morning, the process of drawing the belly in is a little bit easier. Rise up and let's just sit with our heels close to our butt. 
as close as you can get them without any knee pain and give yourself a hug so your chest is on your thighs. Okay, all right, go deeper. Push it to your feet, push your knees together, and now reach forward. Not so easy anymore. Bring your knees a little bit closer together, maybe your heels a little closer to your butt. It takes a lot of core strength to stay here. Just one more breath, and then we won't have to do it again. Okay, however you want to get into downward dog, do that. I'm going to rock forward and just step back. Let's walk our hands back to our feet. Roll yourself up to standing. Hopefully the roll is getting easier. I know in the morning I'm so stiff that I have to like walk the hands up the legs. Okay, so we're gonna play with arm strength that affects the leg. So let's bend the right knee and reach for yogi toe lock grip. First two fingers and thumb on that big toe. You try to stand up straight, and however bent your right knee is, that's a good spot, that's your starting point. On the inhale, we're going to straighten the leg as much as it will go. And we'll start to bend the right elbow to pull the leg up. Then we'll straighten the right arm, and we'll watch the leg come down a bit. We'll bend the elbow, pull it up as much as it can go. Straighten the arm. Just experiment with this, because this is going to be very applicable when we go to Lower and super corner. Not super corner. I like it. Um, Kona. Super Kona. Okay. Let that go. Shake it out. So I just want you to see how your arm is, um, it's a player in where your leg is. So let's reach for the other leg. Whatever kind of wiggling you need to do to get the grip is fine. First two fingers and thumb, make a circle. Extend the leg out. If your leg is bent, it's fine. It's still going to move when you bend and straighten your arm. There will still be maybe six or eight inches of range. Just play with what your range is because when we go to land in the full pose, we're going to have to have our arms pull up on the leg so that we don't land on our heel. Instead, we're going to land on our calf muscle. Okay, let that go, shake it out. Let's stand at the top of the mat. I think we have to walk forward because I have your back of your mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to fold. Halfway up, inhale. Step or jump, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Let's jump through and have a seat. We'll go for Upavishta Konasana. So let's widen the legs 90 degrees like we did earlier, but this time we'll fold the torso between the thighs and reach for the outer edges of the feet. So at first, when I am sitting, I can tell that my legs are pretty lazy, but as soon as I lean to right here, the legs catch because otherwise I would topple forward and it would be uncomfortable. So there's that moment of catching that is very important. Your thighs are strong, your calf muscles are pushing down, your kneecaps and feet are facing the ceiling. Okay, let's lift the torso up again. Some people can keep the grip as they lift the leg. I don't know how, I've never understood that. I'm gonna just lean back lift the legs and then catch them again. And then we'll balance on our butt. You can look up, you can lower your shoulders back. And just notice, are you really far on your tailbone? If so, rock forward a TV bit, so that it feels a little more like teetering. If you're too comfortable on the tailbone, you're not gonna be really in the pose, you'll be just too comfortable. Okay, let's cross the shins, vinyasa. So here's where you might want to use your towels. And I'll show you a, a way in. So this 
pose is, is scary and can be painful. I'm not going to lie. So if I have not done this before, I would put my towels like this so that I can land on them. And we're going to try this first just from the, the balance, really the full pose of star on your back. I've never actually done it with towels, so I don't know if I'm in the right spot. But so here we are. This is the pose. I'm going to come down to where we were on our leg, but as I descend, I have to pull up with my arms, flex the feet, and I'll land on the calf muscle. The way I didn't land on my heels was my arms were pulling up. So it's crazy because you're falling forward, but you're controlling it with your arms. So give that a try. Set your towels up if you want. That was just so that you don't land hard on your heel. If your knees are bent, then there's no way to land on your calf muscles. So if you're not straight leg, probably you would want to just gently land and then slide out. The legs have to be fully straight in order to land on the calves. Good. Oh, okay. I was expecting a bit of a disaster. But there's no disaster happening. I'm, I am pleased. All right, so that means that we can do it the whole um, the whole pose, which starts on the back, and uh, it's just including a rocking forward. That's all. So let's lay back, and I'll show you the whole thing in case you're not sure of it. But really, you've already done the hard part. So you would lift your hips up. You'd be here, then you'll rock up. And then the hard part is landing. You can have your towels there or not, and then you come down. So it's just adding the rocking up piece, which is much easier than the falling down piece. If you find it difficult, just bend your knees. Nice. Good. Yes, Carolyn, good fight. We did it. Yay, we did it across the board. All right, let's meet in downward dog. So I wasn't sure if it was going to work for, for me and all of us because it's just, you know, I wake up and I can't touch my toes, but we did it. All right, let's bring the right leg forward to Anjaneyasana. But we're going to turn the toes out to the side and come down to the elbows, perhaps. If your hip is about to die, do not come to the elbows. Maybe it's too much. If you want more, reach your right hand for your back foot and pull it in. Unravel. We'll turn the right foot to face front again. We'll find our Ardha Chandrasana again, like we did before. But this time, hold your left ankle with your left hand and kick into a back bend. Try to look up at the ceiling that's over your left shoulder. That might inspire you to kick a little bit more. Untwist, step back to your lunge, and find a plank. Right foot back. Let's stay here for a moment just so that you can draw your belly in. We're going to land all the way on our belly, but try not to let your hips land first. Chest and hips will land together. And let's slide the feet just a little further back so that you're not crunched up in the hip flexors. We'll reach for the Ankles, and we'll kick. Dhanurasana. We're going to take it into Parshva Dhanurasana. So onto the right shoulder. So we imitate what you just did in your standing balance. So that same idea of kicking your foot away from you, of looking up over your left shoulder. And if you can't quite grip your feet, Instead of holding the feet, just bring your right arm out to the side, let go of your legs completely, and roll over onto it so that you get that shoulder stretch 
and it's still looking over the left shoulder. Okay, let's come back three center. Let go of the feet if you have them. Inhale to upward facing dog. Exhale for downward facing dog. Left foot forward. We'll turn it out 45 degrees, right knee down. Decide to stay on the hands or descend. Decide to hold your back foot or not. Unravel, stand on that left foot, stack your hip, reach your right hand for your right foot. You might want to hold the strap or just repeat what we did earlier with the leg extended straight. And now that you know that Parsha uh, Danirasa has come in next, maybe you think of this pose differently. Get out of there, step to your lunge, then step to your plank, hover for a moment, belly in, and come all the way down to your belly. So if you can't grip your feet, just extend your left arm parallel to your left shoulder and roll onto it. And you'll still get the top half of the benefit. Otherwise, we hold the ankles and we rock. And it's really tempting to rest there, but keep kicking like your heels want to move as far away from your butt as they can. Okay, let's come through center. Pause in center to kick your toes up toward the ceiling. Thighs potentially off the floor. Come on down, hands under the shoulders. Inhale for upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Okay, let's come to stand on the knee. So remember earlier how we did that lunge where you um, you lifted your back knee off the floor like this with your toes untucked. So we're going to use that here. Let's reach forward with our arms, lean back with your torso, and your toes are going to press into the floor immediately and rise up again. And just do this a few times. If you want it to be harder. Instead of reaching your arms forward, you can put your hands just by your sides so there's not as much counterbalance. If you want it to be harder still, you could reach for your ankles. So then you're more in Lagavadrasana. You could even go all the way down to actual Lagavadrasana. But the essence is your toes. Take two more little rounds, whatever that is. I just want to see what two you've chosen. Good. Ashley, think pubic bone up, knees in. Good. Okay, let's just meet in downward dog. Somehow, come through onto your back. The down dog is just a very gentle forward bend that might help kind of relieve you from the back bend. So we're just going to come into like this little Pilates bridge thing, but not a bridge with our chest pooping up like yoga style. Let's smush our backs into the floor. You know, start to feel your pubic bone angle toward your belly button when you do that. You start to peel yourself off the floor. So your pubic bone is lifted. Lifting, 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 
And eventually, maybe we can get it so that we have a straight line from shoulders to knees. And sometimes I take a peek just to see that it's kind of a rough estimate. Let's push pretty hard into the feet. And you're going to notice your butt starts to work pretty hard. Let's keep this shape with the body. Keep pressing your feet into the floor. Just lift your arms up and overhead so that your knuckles can touch the floor. And then bring your arms again down so they're by your feet. Just one more time like that. Don't let your hips drop at all. So keep lifting, keep it going up. You should feel this a lot in your glutes and in your hamstrings. We'll lower the arms. Let's just lower the butt a few inches and then lift it back to where it was. Just do this a few times, just to turn on the glutes and hamstrings a little bit more. You could blame Ashley for us doing this. This is so she can attempt Lagu Bhadrasana again, but with the pubic bone pressing a little bit more forward. But we all needed to do this. Just that Ashley inspired us to work it a little bit more. Okay, let's lower down one vertebrae at a time. Right. I hope I can walk later. Ouchie. <laughs> Ow! I laugh when I'm in pain. Okay, let's somehow return to our shin bone. You can rock side to side and get there. You can rock forward and back to get there. We're just going to try that Lagu Bhadrasana thing again. So those of you coming all the way down, the hand is just a nice, easy, natural shoulder position, thumb inside, four fingers on the outside. And then the key is not to let this happen. If my hips get low, oh, it's so hard. So we want to keep the pubic bone up, even as we come down, even if you don't come all the way down. It's like the pubic bone is trying to reach as far away from the floor as possible. Otherwise, it's really painful in the back. So give it a try. You can have the arms extended out again, doing that version where you just lean back a little bit, because that's going to give you a lot of strength in the quads, but also flexibility. Ooh. Ash, let me see. I, I missed it. I was watching John for today called Theodore Cleaver. I'm not even sure who that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some kind of pop reference that I didn't, didn't know. Okay, so Ash, that was better. Your hips stayed up higher. Still, your knees play out, but that was better. Sometimes people squeeze the block between their thighs in that pose. That's one way to make it really unpleasant. Okay, down the dog. Use this to help you recover from back then if there's anything that hurts. Use this to help you make a game plan. We're going to come onto our backs and we'll take either Seiji Bandha Sarvangasana, which is that bridge pose, but now with the yoga chest puffing out, or Urdhva Dhanurasana. So this one is Seiji Bandha. So now it's not the straight line from shoulders to hips. Now it should feel like the chest is a balloon, helium balloon, reaching. And then Urdhva is the one where our hands are flat, and we try to straighten it off. Either way, you're going to step on your feet really hard. A lot of weight. And let's come down. Take one breath to rest on your back. And come up again. So not too long of a rest, or we get really comfortable. Just like when we skip a week or a couple weeks of yoga or of any habit or hobby, we lose our momentum. Let's come on down. One breath down there to rest. And let's keep our momentum. We'll come up for the last time. 
into the back knee. Push into the feet. Push the pubic bone up higher. Breathe through the chest. Balloon yourself out. Come on down. Oh, Lord. Now my quads are tired. <laughs> okay, let's rock somehow to downward dog. I'm crawling there. And we're going to have a choice for inversion. To some of you right about now are probably feeling done with back bend. In which case, you're going to go for a headstand. If you are not feeling done with back bend, you're going to go for a pinch of Irasana with a full back bend. So I'll show you the pinch of form because that would be a little bit trickier. So we're going to try to come up with only a little bit of energy, not a whole lot of kicking, not a whole lot of anxiety. And then we'll try looking forward. I need to separate my feet when I start looking forward. Otherwise, I feel like my back is going to snap in two. So if you want to do a back bend still, try that one. Otherwise, interlace your fingers, go for headstand, which will be straight up and down. So I think that because Carol is staying in a balance so easily, I think she's in headstand. But Miss Bloom, I saw you come up with one leg at a time. So let's go down again and do it over. <laughs> come on, you got this. Remember how we did it the other day? Just keep walking until, yes, there we go. I know it sucks, but if you keep doing it more and more, it will suck less. Good, so take about five more breaths, wherever you are, literally count your breath. It will give you something to do so you don't freak out. I think the winner of yoga today is Carolyn and her cat. <laughs> they are having a fabulous time. All right. So when you do come down, either rest the child pose for a few breaths or kneel for a few breaths. Let's meet in downward dog. You might have to pedal out the feet a little bit. Depends how deep you took those back bends. Let's start walking the hands back to the feet. Put a bend in the knees so that you can reach your arms around the legs and then through the center or crisscross applesauce. We'll hold on to the opposite shin bone. And we'll attempt to straighten our legs. That is a world of difficult. The first step is getting your hands actually onto your shins. That's a huge deal. Once, you, once you're there, think more about belly in. If you can keep your belly drawing in, naturally, eventually, the legs will have no problem. When you feel ready, let that go and somehow sit down, whatever plan you devise or Hashimottanasana. We'll fold forward, legs are straight or bent, but we're not going to use a strap to connect hands and feet. So if you can't reach for your feet, just bend your knees. And again, think about that space between your belly button and the legs. Rise up. We'll roll down to the back for halasana. And if halasana is not your jam, go for the legs up the wall, L shape. 
So this would be an L shape. I don't have a wall, so I would just maybe stay like that. But if you're going to Halasana, you can lift your hips up and bring your feet back behind you. The hands can support the back, or you can interlace your fingers. Just try to make sure that your chin and chest are not squished together. Let's keep the right leg straight, bend the left knee, so your knee either touches your forehead or your temple or your ear or your shoulder. Restraighten the left leg so you can do that with your right leg. Restraighten your right leg and bend both knees. We'll place the palms down on the mat flat and start to roll down to your back. Keep your thighs close to your torso as you roll down so that it's easier. And when you get there, just hold, hug your knees in, rock a little bit side to side. If there's any other physical pose you'd like to do before Shavasana, do that. Otherwise, sit up and we'll breathe for a, a moment or a minute or two minutes together. If there's some other, um, you know, your body hurts or you just need another pose physically, then do that instead. And then you can just ignore my talking. So if you're going to breathe with me, just sit up straight. You can close the eyes because there's nothing to see. And just notice your breath. Any count is fine. We're just going to start to hone in on the transition between inhale and exhale. That moment when it changes from one to the other. And start to make your breath a little bit shorter. So there's more transition happening. And then shorter still. And we'll try to make a one second inhale, a one second exhale. And we'll try to fit in a few breaths for, or a few seconds rather, for the inhale. Notice when you play with breath, it is something that you actually can be entertained by. Let's find that one second inhale, one second exhale. And go for a half second inhale, a half second exhale. And then even faster. And eventually you won't even know if you are still breathing or if you have died. Because you're just flirting with that line of transition. If you start to get out of breath, it just means that you've gone a little stronger with either your inhale or your exhale, that you are not balanced anymore. You just start again. Feel free to keep playing with this, and whenever you're ready, lay back for Shabbat.
Bring one or both knees into your chest. Roll to the side. Just like most of our poses, including things like, um, like entering our inversions, getting up into Pinchamayarasana. We use as little effort as possible. So sit up with minimal effort. Let your head be perched easily on your neck. No tension, no reason to hold it super still. Let's fold forward any amount to seal your practice. Namaste. Namaste.